Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back. I'm Jake, the Muslim metaphysician. Today we have an interesting topic for you guys. So the title of the stream is, Can We Practice Islam Without the Sunnah? So what I did was I posted this in a bunch of different places on Twitter, Facebook, etc., I'm hoping that uh, we'll get some people here to watch this live stream. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to give this maybe a 10, 15 minute, I don't know, it might even take me less than that, introduction to the topic. And then I'm going to post a link for people to join the stream, preferably um, Quranists or Quran alone. Quran only, uh, hadith, sunnah rejectors, submitters, whatever they want to call themselves. I don't know. They, if you want to just go by Muslim, that's fine too. But people who see the Quran only as the only legitimate source of legislation and guidance in Islam. I'm going to be dealing with these folks, hopefully. We'll get some of them that will join the stream and come on to uh, defend their position. Well, first of all, explain what their position is, and then obviously defend it as well. So <clears throat> let me just actually tweet out here while we're sitting here waiting um, that I'm live. So let me let the people know. That the Muslim metaphysician is live. <clears throat> but uh, how's everybody doing in the chat? I see there's we've got some people in the chat saying salams. So salam everybody. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> okay. Ali Bob in the building. What's going down big time? Salam, what's going down? People don't know, but that's my um that's my buddy right there, my my high school friend. So um he's one of the people that introduced me to Islam. Alhamdulillah. But uh, we've got Abu Jamal just became a new member, so appreciate that. Shout out to uh, Abu Jamal. May Allah reward you and bless you. So anybody who's uh, interested <clears throat> in supporting my work here at the channel, you guys can click the join button. I've also got it as a uh, pinned message here in the chat. So the pinned message uh, to support the channel, you can become a member and receive access to... Uh, Members only live streams, inshallah. Mm, somebody throwing up pens in the chat. All right, guys, I got to get my pen out. I got to get my pen out for these folks. And let me get a little piece of paper, too, just in case I got to write anything down. But uh, throw them pens up in the chat. Um, so, yeah, I just tweeted it out. Let's see. If you guys have any uh, hadith rejector friends or sunnah rejectors, Quran alone, whatever they want to call themselves, invite them to the uh, live stream here. And let's see, we can sit down and have a conversation. You know, it is what it is. Let's get it done. But uh, let me just post it on Facebook as well. See if we can get anybody to join. See what's going down. I know that it's late for the people overseas in the UK, so might not get as many people watching, but we'll see what it is. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, so for those who don't know, in Islam, we believe that uh, we follow two sources, which is the Qur'an wa Sunnah. So the Qur'an is the direct revelation 
from God. It's the word of Allah that was revealed to the Prophet uh, Muhammad alayhi salam. And we also believe in something which is called the Sunnah, which is essentially the way of the Prophet. <clears throat> and this is found in a couple different places. So it's also found in um, Hadith literature, which have got uh, Bukhari and Muslim collections of uh, Sahih Bukhari and Muslim back there in my little library over there. Um, hadith texts. And also, if you're a Maliki, such as myself, we also believe in the the Amal Ahl al Medina, which is the uh, basically the works or the deeds of the people of Medina. We believe that the Sunnah was transmitted through that as well, but we don't really need to get into the fiqh uh, debate on this <laughs> amongst the different uh, madhahib. But uh, anyway, so we believe firmly in the Quran was Sunnah, so the Sunnah also uh, possesses, rev we believe, revelation from Allah in the sense that uh, the Prophet alayhi salam was inspired uh, not just with the Quran, but he also received other wahi or revelation. And some of that is captured or expressed in the Hadith and Sunnah. So um, there are numerous examples of that, um, you know, whether it be. <clears throat> and so oh, actually, before I go into that, I want to address actually the title of the stream. So the title of the stream says. Can we practice Islam without the Sunnah? So my answer to that is no. And I'm going to give a couple of reasons why. But before we get into that, I want to give for people who don't know. Some people may be new to me. They don't know some of my, my background story. Um, I, was, I was brought up as a Roman Catholic. And probably when I was about... Let me see, maybe 20, 21, somewhere in my early 20s there, uh, I became a Muslim. But when I first became a Muslim, just through reading the Quran by myself, I had no idea about Hadith and Sunnah. And when I started to get introduced to it by my friend, a lot of things he was saying didn't make sense. And he would say, oh, well, this is in the Quran. And I said, no, bro, this is not in the Quran. Turns out, I've come to find out, well, it's in something called Hadith or Sunnah. And I um, said, oh, well, I don't know anything about this. You know, what, what's all this about? Because I was just a new Muslim, didn't know anything, really. And um, so I started looking into it, and just some stuff didn't make sense to me, right? Uh, somebody says that I'm late. How am I late? I'm on time. I was perfectly on time today. Usually, I'm... A couple minutes late, but uh, today I was on time. I don't know where you came come up about I was late. Maybe you're just joking around. Anyway, so uh, so I, a lot, a few things didn't make sense to me, and so when I first became a Muslim, I was a Quranist, and then I became an sort of an ardent defender of the Quran only position for about seven, eight years. Um, so up until just over two years ago, I've been a traditional Sunni for about two, oh, a little, maybe two and a half years now. And um, <clears throat> so I'm going to give some reasons. I, I've done it before, but uh, some of the reasons why people are asking for the pen. I got the pen right here, people. So, um, and those who don't know, is this pen necessary or contingent? It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. So, um, yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, so I became a traditional Sunni about two, two and a half years ago. Alhamdulillah. And uh, part of the reason why was because the answer to this question is no, that we, we don't and we're not able to practice Islam without the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salam. And part of the reason is because the Qur'an um, 
So l- let's take a simple example, like uh, salah or uh, how to pray in the Quran. You have the command to pray in the Quran, but you don't have the details necessarily for it. Some things you have the detail for, <clears throat> or you may have certain details about it, but you don't have all of the details for it. And so, for example, how to even begin the prayer. Do you raise your hands and say, Allahu Akbar? There's nowhere in the Quran where this is ever even mentioned. How do you end your prayer? Do you turn your head and say, Assalamu Alaikum? How, or and turn it to the other side or what? There's nothing in the Quran about how to begin the prayer, how to end the prayer, what to do in the prayer. Likewise with um, Hajj, for example, when to perform Hajj. So, uh, you know, the Quran actually mentions that Hajj is to be performed in the well-known months. But the Quran never actually explains what those months are. It just assumes that the reader already knows what they are. So the Quran uh, tells you that you should perform Hajj and then tells you, it assumes that you know when to do it and then doesn't actually tell you. Uh, Likewise, you have, um, I mean, we can give numerous examples of not being able to practice the the deen or the religion of Islam from the Quran alone. They're just not there. And uh, this is not an attack on the Quran because the Quran points to the Prophet السلام, and to his Sunnah, which gives us other information in order to know and contextualize and understand some of these things. Also, we have other examples, like in chapter 2, this is a famous example that I give, uh, verse 143, which mentions that the Prophet alayhi salam, uh, had two qiblas. And it mentions when he changed his qibla to whatever the first one was, to al-Masjid al-Haram. But there's no mention in the Quran of what that first qibla was. Likewise, there was no command to follow another qibla in the Quran besides Masjid Haram. So we were left with a few options. Was the Prophet alayhi salam just merely making up his own qibla besides Masjid Haram? Um, in which case, was he given permission to just make it up on his own? Did he make it up on his own, but he wasn't allowed to? He Meaning he was disobeying a law by doing that? Or did he have wahi or revelation from a law that told him to do this? Um, what's the answer from a Quranist perspective? What was the first Qibla? Where was the command in the Quran to follow this first Qibla? And why was he following it? If he, if he didn't have any command from a law. Um, so these are some questions that the uh, the Quranist needs to answer. Likewise, how does the Quranist know? And this is an, an Arabic Quran. I've got one over here, actually. It should be better. Um, how does the Quranist know that this, which is uh, Hafsan Asim, how does he know that this is the Quran and it's the preserved word of Allah? How does he know this one is that? Without using circular reasoning, how does he know that this is the Quran? Right? Um, so these are some of the questions that are uh, that our friends need to answer. Now, this the reason why I'm doing this stream is because one of the reasons anyway is I used to be a Quranist for about eight years. So I know these guys' position inside and out. I know the way they think. I know the type of people they generally are. I know uh, what verses they appeal to in the Quran, what their weak points are, what they think their perceived uh, strong suits are. And uh, I know their arguments. One second here. Somebody posted in the chat. Uh, been waiting for this topic. Jazakallah uh, khairan. Uh, Wa'iyakum. Appreciate the super chat. So, um, yeah, if you guys want, you can, if you guys want any comments or questions addressed, you can send them as a super chat. 
And I'm going to post a link in the chat soon and put it as a pinned message for you guys. That way, uh, that way people will be able to join the stream. I'm hoping that we'll get some Quranists to join the stream, but it doesn't look like we have any lurking in the chat, but I could be wrong. So, uh, I, yeah, I did have a conversation with uh, Ziad. Uh, people are saying that he got demolished. Well, of course he did because uh, he just was bringing nonsense. He couldn't really answer any of the points, right? So... <clears throat> The point I was trying to make was about um, – one second here, actually. Let me make sure I got this up here correctly. Um, so when, when we say that – when we actually say that uh, – or my point actually going back backwards was that uh, I was a Quranist for a long time, so I know what these guys' position is. And so one of the reasons is doing the stream is to invite them on here to have a discussion have a conversation and we'll see what it is but uh, i think that it is a dangerous position to have in the sense that uh, it's not the truth and there are serious problems with it even that i can demonstrate from the quranis own paradigm and that's what i'm here to do today i've given a few examples but i don't want to go too far off the beaten path and I'm hoping when I put the link in this chat, it will get some people to join. So if you've got any friends that hold this position, please uh, share the link that I'm going to put in the chat right now. Uh, share it with them and see if they'll come on. We'll see what it is. So just share the link in the chat. Uh, I'm going to pin it. So it's pinned as a message in the chat. If anybody wants to join, like I said, preference will be given to uh, Quranists. So if they <clears throat> if they join the chat, definitely preference will be given to them. If Muslims or other people have any questions about this specific topic, that's fine as well. But I do prefer to speak to them about this directly. So, um, let's see. One second. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, if we don't get any takers, if we don't get any people to join the stream, what I'm going to do is I'll stay here for about an hour. I'll stay in here. I mean, if I don't get any callers by within 40 minutes from now, so I'll stay for about an hour on the stream, then. It'll wind up just being me talking to you guys about <clears throat> my experience with Claude Annis, why I think they're wrong, maybe some arguments uh, against their position. I mean, I can keep talking about it, but I'm hoping that some of these people will join, inshallah. Um, so let's see here. <clears throat> One second. All right, so it looks like we've got somebody here, Zane. I'm going to add you to the stream. Just introduce yourself when I add you to the stream and state your position, whether or not you're, you're a Quranist or whatever. So welcome. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, I'm Zane. I'm from uh, England. Uh, I am a Quranist. Okay, great. So, uh, wa alaikum salam. So, <clears throat> what's what's your position? Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a, uh, I believe in uh, the Quran. Um, I, uh, I don't um, necessarily believe in uh, this sort of uh, Sunni hadith or um, many hadith in general. Uh, my school is uh, the uh, Ibadi school, and we reject most hadith. Do you accept the Sunnah? Uh, define the Sunnah. What do you mean by that? Where do you, where uh, do you get the Sunnah from? Um, well, 
I mean, depends who you ask, but I'm a Maliki, so I believe that the Sunnah is not only transmitted through Hadith, but also through uh, the Amal or practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the uh, the the Maliki position, but uh, not every sort of Hadith is the Sunnah. Uh, sunnah is obviously something that has been established, uh, and so, for example, if you talk about Salah, um, if you ask. Uh, most Muslims, how did you learn Salah? They did not learn it from the Hadith. Hadith do not tell you how to do Salah from start to finish. They do not. So, for example, uh, when you start Salah, when you say Allah <coughs> Akbar, do you raise your uh, hands to your ears, then say Allah Akbar? You say Allah Akbar while you're tying it. You say it before you even raise it to your ears. This is in the Hadith. The Hadith just says, uh, say Allah Akbar before uh, starting the Salah. So these sort of questions, uh, the Hadith will answer them neither. So it's not really a valid criticism mm. of the Quran alone position, in my opinion, because the Salah doesn't come from Hadith anyway. It's uh, Mutawatir Amal, uh, which has been passed down uh, from the Prophet. So the Prophet... Yeah, uh, yeah but most would Quranists do. wouldn't accept that either. So that's that's the thing. <clears throat> yeah, but if, if, if by Quranists you mean Hadith rejection, you can reject the Hadith and still have Salah. No, because not just not just does it come not, from just, hadith? not just not uh, just hadith rejection, but the the actual title of the stream. Yeah, I'm not sure if you noticed. It says, "Can we practice Islam without the Sunnah?" That's the question. Mm, so it's not think... the, the, the Sunnah is not. The, I agree that the Sunnah is not limited to hadith, but the Quranist, uh, for the most part, is going to say that yes that we don't need the sunnah, not only do we not need the sunnah, but it's not a valid source. So if well, that's the not, answer, it doesn't matter about hadith once they reject even the concept in and of itself. Are you not essentially lumping all the Quranists as a single group uh, and t uh, instead of seeing uh, the differences within the Quranist uh, sect? Because many Quranists yeah. would accept the sunnah. Uh, I don't... Uh, just I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't I wouldn't consider them Quranists then. They wouldn't be Quranists to me. Because so to me, a Quranist is somebody who says that only the Quran is a valid source of legislation and guidance in the deen. That's what a Quranist to me is. Mm, because I've come across uh, many different groups. As you know, you are part of uh, Hamza uh, Abdul Malik's group. I know his position. I know the position of sort of uh, the Pakistani Quranists like Ulama Ahmad Pervez, uh, you got Sam Gerens, you got all these different Quranists, and a lot of them they do have different positions. So uh, particularly in Pakistan, they are Quranists, and yet they wouldn't sort of reject the Salah. So the actual Quranists that would uh, reject everything uh, except uh, the sort of Quran uh, are not the majority uh, Quranists. So, um, yeah, but when, when, you, when you, you said that they would accept what narrations? No, they'd accept the salah, for example. Uh, many yeah, you can you can accept the salah. I'm not saying that you don't need to say that salah is uh, something else other than a ritual prayer. I'm not saying that, but the the practice of it or the details of it, we agree, are not in the Quran. And then where you get them from, if you say that they're transmitted through either hadith or amal or both, um, to me, you're you're no longer a Quranist. You're already admitting that you need another source besides only the Quran. I mean, that's just the way I see it. So I don't really see um, – I mean, you can – there's two things. If the Quranist wants to say, well, yeah, I believe in Salah. And I believe that I, I have the details, all of it in, in my Quran, um, then they're going to need to try to show that. And I just don't think that can be done. I think we're in agreement there. Then second, if, if they want to go to uh, the Amal, well, then I'm happy with that. But now they're embracing a second source besides the Quran, in which case to me, they're no longer Quran alone. They're embracing the Sunnah, even if it's in the form of Amal. So... I just don't see how – I mean, there has to be a, a line drawn somewhere. Um, merely just rejecting some hadith or even the, the vast majority of them, I would not consider that Quran alone. Right, but I think some of the issues that you have brought up, um, 
I did make a note of some uh, some of them. Uh, they're not necessarily an issue that the Quranist has. It's an issue with uh, Islam. For example, the Qur'at issue. The Qur'at uh, issue uh, is not just one that the Quranist can't answer. Uh, many Muslims can't answer it. And for example, uh, the, I, the traditional sort of um, approach to it is that seven Qur'at were revealed uh, and they were all revelation from God. And yet the issue is that the different Qur'at, they say different things. So the meaning is different with each one. It's not just a dialect issue. The meaning is actually different. So the idea of seven revelations and yet the seven revelations are saying different things is not a valid response. And even with the Qibla, for example, that you brought up, uh, you say the Quran is can't answer it. Uh, but there are many things uh, in the Quran which the um, the traditionalists can't answer, uh, uh, which we have no information for, uh, like sort of uh, uh No one really knows who that was. Uh, in Surah Yasin, the three messengers, uh, no one knows who, who that was either. Who was uh, Dhul Kifl? Some people say Ezekiel. No one really knows. There are many things in the Quran. Yeah, but you're bringing, on a, you're, don't know. you're bringing up a bunch of issues which are honestly irrelevant. So let's let's go back to w what you said about the uh, the uh, the different recitations of the Quran and all that stuff. The, the point yeah. of that is, again, to show that the Qur'anist needs to appeal to another authority outside of their Qur'an to justify it. They can't use circular reasoning to say, oh, well, the Qur'an says that it's preserved, therefore it's preserved. That's not going to work. But I mean, you, because if that's the you case... you do that as well, though. Do you not? No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. So you so, said the Qur'an... No, I don't. I do, hold on a second. Hold on a second, sir. I do not do that. I do not have a problem with another authority outside of the Qur'an. That's the whole point. The Qur'anist, I'm taking, see, what you're doing is you have a particular view of what a Qur'anist is that I don't. And you're and you're then saying, oh, well, the Qur'anist could say this or it could say that. No, I'm taking a very simple meaning of what a Qur'anist is, that they only believe in the Qur'anic text and they cannot appeal to stuff outside of it. And if they do appeal yeah. to something outside of it, then fine. Then they're already they've already lost the battle because they're saying that they need something else to appeal to in order to be justified in holding to the preservation of the Quran or even how they got the Quran. All of these different things. So I don't have any problem uh, discussing about how the. Uh, different recitations of the Quran were transmitted and which ones are valid and which ones are not and how do we know these and looking at Quranic manuscripts and all these kind of, I don't have a problem with that but for the most part the Quran is that I was around and that I speak have spoken to many times they would not accept this in fact when we did a whole stream of it on uh, Thought Adventure podcast which is my other YouTube channel we had people literally say, oh, well, chapter five, 15, verse 9 says that Allah preserves the Qur'an. Well, how do you know that? Because he says it. Well, how do you know that that was original to the Qur'an and that the rest of it is preserved? Well, because he says it. So it's circular reasoning. Unless you but appeal to the, something uh, else, then you're stuck in a vicious circle. That's the point. Yeah, but I think the, the, sort of the, the approach that they have, and I think it is sort of valid from a theological point, is that they believe that the Quran is from God, uh, because based on various reasons that they have, and then they then believe that God, if it is from God, God has preserved it, and uh, this is a point of faith. So there are many things in the Quran which we sort of take on faith: hell, heaven. Yeah, so but on. not the Quran itself. We don't take the Quran yeah, itself that's just based another on step. faith. No, yeah, no, no. That's that's step. no. That's the fundamentals. I'm sorry. You cannot say that. Well, why do you believe in the Quran? Well, because the Quran says it's from God. Well, why do you believe it's from God? Because the Quran says it. That's circular reasoning. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I don't think that's the, their position. No, no. They don't say it's from God because God says it's from God. I think they yeah. uh, sort of make arguments such as sort of scientific miracles or whatever argument that they have. That's why they no, believe it's from God. Well, they, most of them don't really have good arguments for that. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that unless you are going to appeal to something other than the Quran itself that actually justifies it being transmitted properly, you have nowhere to go. If you want to say, well, I came to believe that the Quran is true because of certain points. Okay, that's fine. But 
how do you know that the rest of it is preserved other than the, the small parts that lead you to believe that it's from God? You can't just then refer back to those other parts that lead you to believe that it's from God. That's not going to be enough. Yeah, but I think if, if we sort of be honest with the sort of argument that we're making, when they say we believe that the Quran is from God, and then they think that because it is from God that we, uh, we believe that God preserved it, for me that is sort of it's a va it's valid. I can't sort of disagree with that. Uh, yeah, but how do you how do you know how do you know that it's preserved? No, I'm taking on faith. I think that's the the point. Yeah, no, uh, so I, that's the point. I don't I don't take it on faith. We don't take it on faith. We believe yeah, plenty based of things on that we, we do take on faith. Like what? Uh, hell, I, I can't prove hell. What's that? Well, what, hell, hell and heaven. I can't prove that. Yeah, but anything what does that have to do with the text itself? I don't understand. No, but no, but anything metaphys. This is a metaphysical claim that uh, God. No, it's not. It. No, it's not. It's not a metaphysical what, what, claim. What God saying God is not a metaphysical claim. No, anything that God says is not necessarily metaphysical just because God of said it. it is. No, it's not. History history can't prove God. History is God not is. metaphysical. If the Quran says that this person lived at such and such time, and then you go on to find that no, this person actually never even existed. That yeah, but history <laughs> that's not a metaphysical access. claim. That's no, a claim history about access. history. No, history yes, can't access have, God. We have nobody's saying history can access God, but just because God makes a claim doesn't mean the claim itself is metaphysical. I don't know where you're getting that idea from. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you know what a metaphysical claim is then. Yeah, I do. Like uh, for example, the the for example, I think we can both agree that heaven and hell. Uh, that is metaphysical. You can't establish that. You can't prove that. The idea of God existing, uh, we, we can't necessarily prove it. You can give arguments for it and so on. Uh, that's a sort of uh, a separate no, discussion. No, I, so I disagree with you. You're, 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 you're telling me, you're trying to say, we can't do this, we can't do that, but you're projecting that onto me. I don't agree with half of what you're saying. I mean, you're talking to the Muslim metaphysician. You're talking to the Muslim metaphysician. <laughs> so yeah, but I, I just don't. I don't. I don't, I don't yeah. agree with what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have arguments for God. That's fine. Many people do, and there are plenty of convincing arguments. But you can't uh, prove God like you can uh, prove something scientifically and empirically uh, and in other, uh, other ways. So when yeah, because you don't say, put God in a test tube. But proving something in one realm and proving something in a scientific realm doesn't mean that I need to for God, which is metaphysical. I don't need to then say, "Oh, here's God," and point him out. But claims that the Scripture makes are not necessarily metaphysical claims. Some of them might be like heaven and hell, but saying that Jesus Christ was a person that existed is not a metaphysical claim. Yeah, I'm, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with that part, but I think even the very idea of the Quran even being from God, uh, or God even existing, this God, Allah existing, these aren't things that you can sort of prove. So for you to even like argue, yes, they can. That's that's what I'm saying. You keep saying that just because you can't prove it doesn't mean that I can't. Well, well, could you kick? Okay, I do it. I, I do okay. it on a daily basis, dude. Okay, just give me one argument that the Allah. Is the God of the listen, uh, Quran? Listen, and it was this, a, and it, this, no, is, no. this is not what the stream is about. The fact of the matter is, if you don't know how to prove that God exists, that's not my problem. That's your own inadequacy. I do it on a daily basis with atheists. Yeah, I, and I yeah, have a I'm, whole I'm channel. Sorry. I have a whole separate channel called Thought Adventure Podcast, which is pretty much dedicated to that. So if you haven't checked it out, I suggest you go and watch it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you you believe that you can prove uh, God exists. Like uh, many people, they, they believe that they have uh, convincing arguments. But uh, I'm a Muslim, right? And I I'm, I'm being honest, right? The arguments uh, that uh, even the Quran offer, many uh, of the Quraysh did not accept him. Uh, many people still disbelieve. Many people. So are how do you prove arguments. that God exists? You tell me. Go ahead. Uh, I take on faith. I'm not going to prove. Uh, so so you take it on. You take it on faith. So you have no. You don't have a good argument to prove that God exists. No, I, no. I believe I have good arguments. I don't believe you can prove 
God exists. I, I can have convincing reasons for why I believe in God. Okay, so go ahead. Give give me give me a convincing reason that you would give to someone else to try to show them that God exists. Uh, a convincing uh, any any God or Allah of the Quran or what uh, any deity what 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 claim are you making? Because no, okay. they're kind of separate. Because yeah, pr- it, it, proving it, it, a deity. Approving yeah, a general but, deity, yeah, a creator but, of the universe, would be different from sort of proving yeah, other so kinds of things. So how do you do that? Uh, so how do you do that? Well, I believe there are many sort of uh, arguments, like the fine-tuning argument. I think that's a convincing argument. Uh, the, there's the Kalam cosmological argument, uh, and I think that's a, another good argument too. Uh, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Uh, the universe began to exist. The universe has a cause. Uh, the cause can't be uh, outside the universe. Uh, the cause must be timeless, and you know how it goes. So on. Will, uh, William Lane Craig uh, is famous for uh, using this argument. I find these to be good arguments, uh, and uh, these would sort of point me towards a creator. But I can't. I'm not proving God here. I'm giving an argument for the existence of God. Okay. So I'm what do you prove, mean by what do you? So what do you mean by prove? Then that you're not proving it. What are you doing if you're no, not the, proving it? What What does proof mean in the context that you're not doing? Well, this is just an arg. It's an argument for God. No, but I'm saying what, you, when you it. say that you're not proving it, what does proof mean then? That's what I'm uh, trying to understand. You're saying you're not doing X, which is proving that God exists. So, what is proving? What does that mean? Do you okay, do you believe that giving an argument for something is necessarily proving it to be true? My brother, I'm asking you a simple question. You are saying that you're not proving it, so you must know what you mean by not proving it. Uh, when I when I say not proving it, I mean, uh, well, I mean, I guess you can say in the sense that I am sort of proving it by demonstrating the truth of it. But when I say proving it, I mean in a sort of sense where it's a certainty. So in a certainty, so in what sense, though, do you think, are you talking about in terms of scientific, like you need to show, oh, here's God and point to him or what? I don't understand. Yeah. uh, So, for example, I believe that uh, like one plus one equals two. I I don't believe it's like it's that level of argument, because even these arguments themselves have been criticized. The Kalam cosmological argument has been criticized, the fine tuning argument has been criticized. So it's not just because it's been criticized. Story. Yeah, but just because it's been criticized doesn't mean that it's not true. Yeah, and, and, and there are sort of uh, various uh, rebuttals to these arguments. Which so I think I think God can be proven in the same one, one plus one equals two. We can take one plus one equaling two as an example. You think that's true, right? One plus one equals two? Uh, yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, so there's truth, right? The mm-hmm. truth that one plus one equals two. How do you account for that on naturalism? Uh, what, what do you mean by that? How do you count that one? How do you one how do you ground truth on naturalism? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Do you do you speak another language? Me. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so let's just imagine for the sake of argument, right? We have one. If I write now one plus one equals two, I'm writing down a piece of paper, right? I've got it here. Yeah. One, one plus one equals two. Now, yeah. if you write that on a piece of paper, one plus one equals yeah. two, what is written on the paper, or even if I express it in another language, is an expression of a truth, right? So it's a it's it's a formula that's written down on a paper. Now the formula that's written down on the paper is not the exact same thing as what you have, because yours is on a different piece of paper. Now, what we have when it comes to truth or sentences, and I can give another example. If I say the snow is white in English, and a person who speaks Arabic says, the snow is white, or they write it down on a piece of paper in their language. We have these different sentences which express, which are not the same, but they have the same meaning in the sense that they express the same truth. 
So we yeah. have the sentences which express the truth. And then we have what's called in philosophy, the truth makers. So the fact that the snow is white, what makes that true is that we have this thing that's called snow and we have the fact that it's called white. That's also white. Now, the snow is white. As I said, the fact that we have snow and that it's white is what makes it true. And then when I express it in English, right, that's an, a sentence that expresses what that truth maker is. Now, you can also express that in many languages and write it down on a piece of paper. And when you do that, what I'm saying to you is those sentences, which are different, all express a single truth, which is non-linguistic, which cannot be expressed in language. So there's something primary, which is what's called in philosophy, the truth bearer or the thing that expresses and the thing that expresses the truth is the sentence. So the sentences of the snow is white in these different languages are multiple. The thing that makes the truth is, is, is singular. And the thing that bears the truth, which is called the truth bearer, is singular. Now, I'm asking you, how do you account for a truth bearer or a proposition which is non-linguistic on a naturalistic paradigm? Um, so I think on uh, the sort of the example I gave on one plus one and uh, other sort of logical sort of uh, things that we believe, I believe that the sort of axioms which we sort of assume to be true and we use them as a sort of basis. Otherwise, if you sort of give an argument for something, then I can just say, okay, why is that true? And then uh, you then you can just sort of keep going until you sort of reach nowhere. No, but so I, say, so no, I think you're missing. I think you're missing the argument. So let's let's keep it simple. We have the snow is white. That's one sentence. We have the snow is white in another language. Let's say French. Right. Are they the same sentence? They're not the same sentence because they're in different languages and they have different uh, pronunciations, different words, different sounds. But they do they have the same meaning? Are they expressing the same truth? Yes or no? Uh, are they? Are they? Well, yeah, they're expressing the same idea. Okay, so they're is expressing. That... They're expressing the same truth. So the fact is, is that the truth is one, and the expression or the sentences of it are many. I'm talking about the one truth that undergirds the multiple sentences or expressions of that. That is something that is a pure meaning that is primary and primitive that is non-linguistic and what philosophers would call a proposition or something that bears a truth. And the sentences are many that express that. I'm asking you, that one well, thing, which is a truth bearer, how is that accounted for on naturalism? It's not material. It's not material. And so you either have to, there's really only three options. You say that the truth is immaterial the truth is material, which is not going to make any sense. Or you're a nominalist and say that it doesn't exist. And then you don't have any truth. I'm saying that it can only be accounted for by the fact that it's immaterial. And that a naturalist cannot account for that. That's my argument. So even the fact of one plus one equaling two, or the snow is white, or any truth claim that you make, it cannot be grounded for on materialism. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not a materialist, so I'm not. So I'm That's the point, but I'm, I'm showing to you that not only can I prove to you that naturalism is false and that there's a God, I can do that based on truth itself, that any truth claim cannot actually be grounded on naturalism. That's my claim. So I'm proving to you that God exists just from one plus one equaling two, because that's true. And the expressions of it are many, and yet the truth of it is one, and yet that truth is something that's immaterial that cannot be explained on a naturalistic paradigm. That's my argument. Anyway, the point is this is diverting from the topic, but my simple point to you is, yes, I do believe that I can prove that God exists. Yeah, I'm okay. I mean, yeah, fair enough. I mean, I'll watch your videos to see if you have any sort of um, 
arguments that I can sort of make use of. Uh, well, but, I do uh, this I on a daily basis. My simple point to you is I don't take that the Quran is true based on faith. I take it based on rational argumentation and evidence. And there are some things in it that I cannot prove in the sense I can't show you that hell exists because I'm not there and inshallah I'll never be there. But my, the, the fact of the matter is, is that I can provide rational argumentation for the fact that God exists, for the fact that the Quran is true, and all of these different things that then later entail it. I do not think that the average Quranist that I speak to can do that. And in fact, when I ask them these questions, they give circular reasoning. No, so, I but anyway, you're not really even a Quranist, to be honest with you. So I think that I'm going to, uh, I'll give you a, a, a final comment and then I'm going to move on to the next person because there's somebody waiting. Yeah, but I, I think my point was essentially that um, I think even most Muslims, that uh, they won't uh, be able to, they aren't in the same way. So it's not a point against Quran, it's, it's a point against so Muslim. The Muslims argue like this. I spoke to many Muslims. And they say, oh, we believe it because it's, uh, it says it's from God. Or we believe it because we're convinced uh, by Islam. But then we believe that the Quran is God, uh, from God. And if it is, he preserved it. And I think that's sort of, I don't think there's any sort of issue with that uh, argue, argument. Yeah, there is uh, an issue because they have to have a justification for why they actually believe in the Quran. Because the Quran says, do not pursue that which you have no knowledge of, which is in chapter 17, verse 36. So I don't believe in blind faith. I don't believe in taqlid when it comes to aqidah. And to do so, I think is haram. So that's not but the my thing position. is, right? <laughs> the, the God himself in the Quran gives plenty of reasons for why the Quran is from God. And that's yeah, why they and, believe it's from God. Yeah, but that's the point. Those reasons, those no, it doesn't end there because the, the well, God the of Quran, the Quran, no, it doesn't because the God of the Quran, when he gives you examples, he actually says, hey, look, why don't you ponder on it? Why don't you reflect? Why don't you use your aql? Why don't you go out and look? Don't you see the signs in creation and in yourself? He gives you, he constantly appeals to things outside of the text itself. Constantly, he yeah, doesn't the say here. The this is, is what the Quran is, the and just the believe is what it external. says, and that's and that's precisely my point. The preservation of the Quran is external, and that's why you need to look at it. That's the point. But I, I'm going to go on to the next person here. But it was nice talking to you. Yes, yeah, long. All right, come sir. So we've got Lost Blue here, Mister Lost Blue. Well, I don't know if it's Mister or Missus, but. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam. Are you a Quranist? Um, Quranist in the sense of that Quran is the only legislation. Is that would be considered one? Only legislation, and what Le what what's the other sense that you wouldn't be a Quranist? Well, le legislation wise is coming as that it's um, it's the fundamental core for spirituality when it comes to Islam itself. That's the way I'm looking at it, but Sunnah doesn't give that. Okay, so you don't think Sunnah is a valid source? Sunnah doesn't give you a any sort of law that is it should be implemented. Like uh, when it comes to some sort of thing like, you know, eating with your right hand. Uh, okay, so when we see the name of the stream is can we practice Islam without the Sunnah? What's your answer to that? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so the prayer, for example, how do you practice that with just from the Quran alone? Well, actually, I wanted to ask a question, if you don't mind. Uh, what is the difference between fard and sunnah? Uh, in what sense? And, in in and, the in yeah, the fiqh in sense? Yeah, yeah, but there, there, yeah, but there's not just it, the term sunnah is going to have de different definitions depending on what uh, science you're talking about. Okay, so um, when it comes to thick, I guess. Yeah, so fard means uh, obligatory and sunnah means uh, recommended in a sense. Yeah. All right, so in fiki terms, uh, sunnah is it something that is, as you said yourself, is it obligatory? What is it? I'm sorry? When it comes to the sense of sunnah itself, like you said, it's not considered obligatory. No? Yeah, but that's not what we're talking about here. That's the whole point. <laughs> But uh, that's, that's what the, I'm saying, the obligation. Yeah, saying, yeah, obligation. yeah, but that's not what we're talking about. When we talk about the sunnah, we're talking about the sayings, deeds, and actions of the prophet. 
But that's what we're talking about. Is it not? About. What's that? Is it not? Is what not? Sunnah. Is I just said when we talk it? about the sunnah, that's uh, what it is. Now, with that's the the sense that the term sunnah is used in this. We're not the term when we say can we practice Islam without the sunnah. That's not referring to oh, in the thick sense we have. We have fard, then we have sunnah, then we have uh, all these different categories. That's not what it's talking about. That's my whole point. And this is a, this, see, this is part of the problem with Quranists, is they take a particular mm. word, and then you think that that's going to be applied across the board, no matter the, the domain right, so, or science that we're in. That's not how it works. All right, so give me an example then. When I when I say can we practice Islam without the Sunnah, that's meaning from no, no, the no, Quran sorry. alone, from the Quran alone, right? Can we establish and practice Islam? That's the whole question. I'm saying no, you're saying yes. So when I ask you, part of Islam is to pray the ritual prayers, the five daily prayers, or if you think it's two or three, I don't know your position. My point is establishing the salah is part of practicing islam can you do that without the sunnah yes or no well the thing is that you're, you're not really answering my question when it comes to sunnah yes i, I am i told you what sunnah no. is okay, sunnah so, uh, is you the said different deeds. One second, sir. no 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 sayings one deeds second, and second, actions second. of the prophet that's what i told you it is okay in this context in this context that yeah, the is question it fard? is it fard? some of it is yes so some of it is that you're saying yes, that it you're is. coming outside of it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you're saying there's two sources that you're coming from now. So there's two different books. No, it's not. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a book, but there's two sources, Quran and Sunnah. That's the point. All right. So you obviously believe that the Quran has missing information. What's that? So you, so you obviously believe the Quran has missing information that needs to be completed by another one, right? The Quran does not have the full information to practice Islam. That's correct. Okay, so that's now my claim. The, so the Quran has some sort of deficiencies. No, that's what you're saying. The Quran doesn't have deficiency. In fact, it tells you that the messenger himself is somebody to be followed and that he received wahi or revelation besides the Quran, and we accept that. But how does that prove that it is not deficient? You're just saying. You're saying that it's deficient. I didn't say it's deficient. And we're going back to the issue again. I'm no, asking you. No, 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 no. Lost. I think you're lost in this conversation. I asked, no, you, a, just, I asked you a direct question that you are refusing to answer. I already answered your question about the sunnah. But now you're refusing to answer my question about your prayer. Is it because you don't have an answer? No, that's not the case. But okay, so what's the answer then? Question. Why why aren't you why are you refusing to answer my question? All right, just give me a second. I thought we were having a discussion. It yeah, but I exactly you asked me a okay, question. So <laughs> I gave you okay. an answer, and now mm -hmm. I asked you a question and you're not answering. Okay, so how are we so... having a discussion then? You you want to just okay. ask me all the questions and I answer, and then when I ask you a question, you ask me a different question without answering my question? That's not a discussion. All right. So you want me to answer your question, which is how do you? Yeah, my question. Friend? Yeah, it could be anything, or I can go to Hajj. How do you establish the Hajj? The Hajj is mentioned in chapter two, verse one ninety-seven. It says that it's to be during the specific months. How do you know when it is? Quran doesn't tell you. Well, the thing is, the Quran actually does say that it's there if you really look at it. Okay, so you tell me what uh, let's let's do this. Let's let's make it very simple. Let's go to one passage here so we can narrow this down very easily for you as well as the other people watching. In chapter two, I'm gonna read it here, verse 197. It says that Hajj, the Hajj, is during the well-known months. So whoever has made Hajj obligatory, and then it continues and goes on and on. Now I'm asking you, what are those well-known months? What are they? Give me one second. Well, if you come to chapter 9, verse number 36, they're talking about the numbers of months in the sight of Allah is 12. So ordained by him is the day he created the heavens and earth, and of them four are sacred. That is a strict usage. So wrong, 
not yourself therein and fight the pagans all together as they fight all together but know that allah is with them and strengthen yourself so it is talking about the four months that you have just said right and if you if you have seen that you come back to the same chapter when it is talking about the war that was supposed to happen or there was a treaty that was completely broke off with the pagans it is talking about wait for four months until it passes so it is giving you a complete understanding that hajj is the final month so it's continuous there's four of them that's the way okay so you you went from you went to chapter 936 was it 936 is I'm trying to explain the four months that you're talking about the sacred yeah, nine, time, but 936 936 okay so first of all it says in 297 it says the well-known months it doesn't necessarily say four but now you're going to 936 to say that the months being talking of are uh, these four months which you're saying are sacred okay. how do you make the connection between 936 and 2197 I mean, I um is in the book itself. I'm I'm saying that the book is complete, isn't it? So I'm not the one going outside of it. I'm saying that the rules have to no, be here. Yeah, let's focus. But, focus lost. Wait, 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 focus the on the is, question. Wait, wait, how no, 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 how no, are no, you no, connecting? No. How are you connecting nine thirty six to two one ninety seven? That's a genuine question. Why? Okay, so what's the point of the book if it's not if you're not gonna do that? That's the point. No, but I'm saying, how are you connecting them? You can't just do it haphazardly. How do you know okay. that nine thirty two one ninety seven is referring to the four months mentioned okay. in nine thirty six? All right, let's. Know? Okay, come to chapter nine, one, two, and three. Chapter nine, what verses one, two, and three? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. What do you want to know about it? Okay, what does it say? Do you want me to read you the three verses? It says, this is a de declaration of disassociation from Allah and his messenger to those whom you had made a treaty among the polytheists. So travel freely throughout the land during four months, but know that you cannot cause failure to Allah and that Allah will disgrace the disbelievers. And it is an announcement from Allah and his messenger to the people on the day of the greater pilgrimage that Allah mm -hmm. is disassociated from the disbelievers. And so, his, and so is his messenger. So if you repent, that is best for you. But if you turn away, then know that you will not cause failure to Allah and give tidings to those who disbelieve of a painful punishment. All right, so it is talking about the greater Hajj that you were talking about just now? I'm sorry, say that again. If you read the verse number three, it is talking about the Hajj, Hajj, that sacred month where it says done. Or no, it doesn't say that. It says, it says greater Hajj, right? Okay, so so it Hajj says mean? here, it says Hajj Akbar. That's what it says. So okay, what's yeah. that mean? The what does that mean? Hajj. Yeah, what is the greater Hajj? The big pilgrimage. The okay. Hajj. Okay, so what is it? So what is it? I, as I said, it's four consecutive months. Hajj is Where does it month. say that? Where does it say that? It's, it, it's right in front of you. You're the one who's saying that I don't see it because you don't see the month's name. But that has no, to do no, no, no. You're saying you're saying verse two says that there are four months. Let's take this slowly. So verse two says so travel verse free. Thirty six. No. Okay. Wait a second. Tra yeah, verse bad, two. Verse two mentions travel yeah, freely bad. throughout the land during four months. Right. We're green. Right. Okay. Verse three says, and it is an announcement from Allah and His Messenger to the people. On the day of the greater pilgrimage. So where I, I don't understand what you're trying to say about the greater pilgrimage in connection to the four months. Can you explain that? It's right in front of you saying I'm reading it, but you're not explaining what it means. So why was the four months given? What do you mean why was the four months given? It was given to the to, to the polytheist. Yeah. So what? What? What do you mean for what? It's talking about to because of the sacred what is, month. It yeah, was but, delayed. but what does this have to do with knowing when the months mentioned in two one ninety seven are? I just still not understanding the connection. It's talking about the yeah. Hajj is yeah. when it's going to end. That's where the treaty ends. When does it? When does it send? When does it say that the the treaty ends? 
when Hajj begins? Where does it say that? It's, it says in number three, what is saying the announcement has been made from God and his messenger, which is? Yeah, the announcement has been made. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say about anything that that's when Hajj starts. Where does it say that? But you're not understanding. It's no, I'm not. <laughs> that's for sure because you're not you're not explaining it. You're just rereading the same thing. It's it's fairly obvious if you just look at the verse no, itself. No, no, it's not yeah, lost. I lost. I think you, I think that you're lost, my friend. I think that you're honestly that. lost in the text right now. Okay. The point the point no, is, I'm asking you first of all. I'm asking you a simple question. Okay, what the months are? That's what I asked in two ninety one ninety seven. Then we went here, and you said you're trying to show me here how the months mentioned in two one ninety seven are the months that are mentioned here. Is that right? Are we on the same page? So now the months that are mentioned here, I'm asking, how do you know what those four months are? That's my question it, to you. Those four months are the yeah. one talking about going towards Hajj. That's the four months. That's the yes. Time. What are the four months? That's what I'm asking you. Oh, then we're you still back the to names. Is that we're still saying? we're still back to the are same you, thing. Sorry, are you asking we have, for names? We, we, we have for names? we have four months, right? 2197 mentions there's several months. Now you're going over here to say that there are four months that 2197 is referring to. That still tells us there's four months. How do we know what they are? The four consecutive months. That's what I was just saying. They come as together. How that's do we know what saying. they are? That's my question. Are you asking for names? Yeah, what are the months? How do we know what they are? Well, it's fairly obvious if you just uh, if you just go with the um, uh, what do you call it? if you go with the calendar, it's the same thing. Yeah, but how do we know what the four months are? That's my whole question to you. It's I don't I understand no how how would how how do you know what the four months are? If I say to you, well, Hajj is during the well-known months, right? In English, okay. Let's say we're going off January all the way to December in English, okay. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, Hajj is during the well-known months. And then we go to another passage that says, oh, it's during four months. How would you know which four out of the 12 months is this? If I don't tell you it's January, February, March, and April, how would you know which one, which of the four out of the 12 it is? How do you know which four they are? That's the whole question. Uh, so that's my month, point. That's my point so to the you. Month is, uh the month is Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qa'da, and Dhul Hajj. Where are you getting that from? From the calendar. Where does the Quran say that those are the four months? But you're not, so it says well known at that time. So are you saying at that time, just because the names are not there, doesn't mean that it's incomplete? No, but I'm saying you, if you, say, if you said that you can practice Islam from the Quran alone, you are now having to appeal to a source outside of the Quran. You can't find no, no, me a verse. Remember one more thing. You can't more. find wait, wait, me wait. a verse that actually tells I'll you what those before. four months are. Sorry, what? This where? Is what I asked you before. You have a I verse. Asked you, this before. you have a verse. One second. One second. You have I asked a verse. you this before. No. You I have asked a you verse. This no. Lost. You made a no, comment. No, no, this is you made a I, comment. I, you made no. a comment saying but, that these are the four months, and you started naming them Ramadan, and you went on to list the four. Where okay. does the Quran list those four verses? Where does it say that? How do you know that those are the four months? Because they come in line with it. I don't get it. What do you mean? They come in line with what? The Quran is your guidance. Your book doesn't tell you no. what the four months are. You So just because the names are not there. That, that means, means you wouldn't know when to do it. I, I gave you the example no, just, in English. No, but how is given at the end? No, no, you're not blue. getting the point again. Lost no, no, blue. this is wait, 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 If, if you're going to talk you, over me, I ask you again. No, no, because you're not. You're not jumping you, over. No, you're you not. You haven't talk? answered yet. You haven't answered it. Yes, yet. I did. I you're, gave you the answer. You're saying okay. No. Now explain where is the name? No, because what's happening? What's question. happening? And everybody in everybody in everybody in the comments. Are you going to let me speak? What? No. Are you going to let me speak? No, I'm not going to let you speak. No, I'm going to I'm going to mute you because you're you're you keep interrupting me. Everybody in the comment section can actually see that you are losing this. You're lost. OK, because I'm asking you a direct question and you're not able to answer. I gave you the example in English. If I say, oh, hey, Lost Blue or hey, Johnny, during these uh, during the well-known months, I'm going to go fishing. And then I say, 
Okay, well, when is that? Well, it's during the four months. Now, if I never tell you when those four months are, January, April, ja January to April, or is it May, June, July, August, or is it September, October, November, December, or is it a mix of different months? You're not going to know when they are. That's the whole point. Now, you're going to a calendar where you're saying that, oh, it starts with Ramadan and then it ends on the, the fourth month after that, but you haven't actually given a verse from the Quran to show that you're appealing to a source outside of the Quran. Everybody can see that. Now I'm going to unmute your mic. And if you can show me in the Quran where it tells you the name of those four months, then I'm happy to accept your position. All right. Can I speak now? Hello? Yes, you can speak. Your, your mic is unmuted. Go ahead. Okay. So, this is why I was asking for Sunnah before. This is the thing. You asked me the question. I answered. Now it's actually my turn to ask you a question. So I'm going to ask you a question. There is a hadith that is talking about the Quran itself. And there's called, it's called Ayat al-Rajam. Have you heard of it? Listen, Lost, if you're going to move to a different point, we're going to move to the next person. Because well, I've, given you, I've given you far enough time. No, it, you're being what is, really what, unfair. What, what's unfair is... You know what's you, unfair? You what, what's unfair? What's question. unfair? What's unfair is it's you got caught. You got caught, and now you're trying no, no, to move no, no, to no. a different point. I will yeah. explain. Everybody, it every I no, you, you no, show me right. show this me the name right. of the four months. Why are you going against the Quran? You're throwing the Quran yeah. under the bus. You're saying oh. it's not sufficient. You said that the month was Ramadan, and now you have no verse from the Quran. Why are you speaking about Allah without knowledge? What is the matter with you when you? Why are you speaking like about that? Allah without knowledge, wait brother? That's okay, that's so disrespectful. Me, wait, wait. There's never even the Quran. You just said that it was Ramadan. Where does the Quran say that the first month is Ramadan? The Where does fourth it say consecutive that? month goes yeah. straight to it. It will end with Hajj. This is how. Yeah. Where Where does it say? Where does it, it say that? To. Where it's does it say the four said. months? Where does it say the name of the four months? Why? The, so you need to know the names of the months just to understand that. Just like yeah, you do. Said, how, it's how, irrelevant, how, isn't it? Just, just like it, just said, like a, just like I no, said. I gave you the example You're in English. To, how do I know if it starts out with January or May or September? How do you know which one it starts with? Okay, it's January know. that you are. Fo you're following a Greg uh, Gregorian calendar. Yeah, I'm asking you exactly. That's so weird. I'm I'm saying to you, how do you know? I'm giving you in English and how we use months. Okay, now I'm asking you in terms of how the Arabs at the time understood the months, and you can't tell me which months it is. Other I than you asserting, did. yeah, but you don't I have. Where does your Quran tell you that? Exactly. Where does your Quran tell you that? Where's your Where's your Quran tell you? This is the biggest problem with your Sunni. Okay, block. Lou, we gave you a chance. Now you're out of here. Sorry to tell you, we gave you too many chances. You're out of here. We'll go to the next person and uh, see if they're able to deal with this. We have Mr. Eats eating waiting. I hope that you're not eating. I hope that you're available to speak. I'm going to bring Mr. Eating on. After I, I make the point that he made the claim in 2197 that it was referring to chapter 9, verse 36, he went to, and then he went to chapter 9, verses 1 to 3. And then he said, okay, the four months are consecutive. Okay, four months being mentioned. First of all, he didn't show a direct connection between 2197 and chapter 9, but we'll give it to him for the sake of argument. Oh, and then we'll give him for the sake of argument that there's those are the four months being spoken of in 2197. Okay, for the sake of argument. We'll even give you that the four months are consecutive for the sake of argument. Now, what are those four months? Allah says that there's 12 months with him. What are the four months that are mentioned with Hajj? He couldn't get, he answer that. He was flabbergasted. I said, so what are the four months? Oh, you're asking for the names? Yeah, what are the four months? He didn't know the answer. Um, I don't know. And then... Then he starts off with Ramadan and he says it ends with Hajj, the, the, the munch of, uh, of Hajj. So uh, the question was, where in the Quran did it actually say that? You can't claim to be a Quranist, but you just pulled out those four months out of your hat. You just pulled them out of your hat. You didn't have a verse from it. You're speaking about a law without knowledge. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to take that on my stream here. I'll give you plenty of opportunities to talk. And he just went on and on. So Mr. Eats Eating, I'm going to add you to the stream now. Please um, 
state your position and your uh, – yeah, so start with you stating your position, first of all. Welcome to the stream, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Are you able to hear me? Okay. Um, I can hear you as well. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say how much I admire your channel and also your other channel, TAP. Uh, um, the issue with um, Quran denial and had or hadith, sorry, not Quran denial, hadith denial, not sunnah denial. I mean, sunnah is the uh, traditions of the people that's brought down to us. So it's, I think, it's really hard. To, for anyone to deny. Uh, um, you're, you're breaking up a little bit, Mr. Eads. But hadith uh, denial is that whenever we, uh, some of us, some we find uh, odd, let's put it that way, we think. Yeah, are, are you able? Are you able to hear me, can Eads? You hear me? Yeah, it seems like you're really delayed, brother. Can you you're, hear me? You're, yeah, but you're breaking up, and it seems like you're really delayed. I don't know if it's your connection. I apologize, but I'm I'm shall, having shall trouble. We try it one more time. Uh, shall, yeah, shall let, you know what? Uh, my, my quick concern is. Yeah, let me let me bring you down, and then I'll I'll, I'll try to add you back after because we have one other person waiting. So why why don't you leave the okay, room fine, and try to enough, try enough. to join back in? Because uh, I think there's a connection issue. Okay, I'll do right? that. All right. So uh, let, we're going to go to A M M, uh, Mister or Mrs. I don't know, could be A M M. I'm going to add you to the stream. Please state your position. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very interesting live stream, bro. Um, what I realized is it always I'm I'm Muslim, so I'm not a Quranist. But I wanted to kind of ask you questions so that you can share with the audience because I think, I don't know why, but every every live stream I've uh, come across, um, I think there was one on Fort Adventure podcast, it always ends up with screaming and shouting on their side. And I think, like, it'd be interesting to see you guys do some kind of, like, basic elementary uh, lessons in fiqh, akida for them. I don't know whether you've got that in the pipeline, but it'd be interesting to see. For who? The Quranists, you mean? Yeah, the Quranists, because I, I, I'm not, not to be disrespectful, because that's not good to, you know, laugh and mock others and whatnot. But I do think that a lot of them do suffer from an array of mental issues or something or another. Like something's not quite right. Some of the arguments they're making, I mean, I know certain kids, 12 year old kids that get it and see would be able to point out the flaws in their 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 train of thought and whatnot and this it just seems like what they're missing is is that kind of online platform of of good brothers like yourself and to, mm. to kind of present do you know what i mean kind of set it up like a kind of little lessons or not maybe yourself others to kind of like teach them no. like that i don't know no. yeah um I, I hear what you're saying The the problem that i have with um these people with all due respect is that mm. they do seem to be largely ignorant. Uh, and, but, and that's not necessarily a problem because I don't know everything. I mean, people have different deficiencies and that's perfectly fine. But the, the real problem is there seems to be an sort of arrogantly ignorant. Mm. Uh, and so they think that they know so much and that they've got everything figured out but when you examine them, it's like they don't really even seem to have the basics down. And mm -hmm. so that's part of the problem because, I mean, I'm happy to learn from other people. I don't have any issue with that. I, I do all the time. But um, if you think that you know everything, then you're not going <laughs> to learn anything. So that's part of the issue is that it seems an unwillingness on the side of the Quranist. 
to actually have a fruitful discussion and learn from each other. It seems that they want, and this hasn't happened yet. So I'm not saying today with the people that come on, but many times they want to shout at you and, and call you a mushrik and say you're a kafir and all this kind of stuff. And uh, it doesn't really go anywhere. But um, yeah, if you want to give your two cents on, on something, maybe that you yeah, want to yeah. say, say to the Quranist, because there might be some listening now, or maybe that might hear it afterwards. Uh, if there's something you want to convey yeah. to them, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, before I do, I was just going to say that something I've noticed is that this is not for all Quranists, but I do see that the kind of arguments, their kind of arguments sound quite similar to David Wood and the Christian fundamentalists. And I've always found that quite fishy. I'm not saying that their, their hatred for Islam almost rivals the Christian fundamentalists, but they've, they've got quite similar attitudes, um, arguments. And I just found that quite suspicious, to be honest, for myself. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I leave that alone. I was going to say this, though, that regarding the preservation of the Quran, of course, you see the Quran has come with their circular reasoning. But I was also going to say that when, when it comes to the Qur'an, okay, we know the method through which it's been preserved. It's, it's like the question is, what's preserved? Is it like scribbles on a piece of paper to which are unintelligible to us? We don't know the meaning of. Is it just words like, you know, a, e, u, a, to which there's no meanings? Now it's the meanings of the words. And I find it quite strange that the Qur'an is, seems to think, okay, say it's preserved from his perspective. But it hasn't been preserved from his perspective because he thinks in the 21st century he's uncovering or rediscovering the meanings of the Quran. So he kind of contradicts himself there. And there's it's just too many problems with his, his way of thinking. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, like, with yeah, because it's almost like in the, there's no chain of what they believe that's going back and back and back to the prophet. No, it's not nothing. Yeah. Yeah, nothing at all, and it's just a lot of opinion as well. Because they say, on the one hand, they don't take up external yeah. sources, but then there you see them opening up books of Orientalists um, who have written uh, lexicons um, to to pick and choose what they think the word must mean. And it's yeah. like it's 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 they're almost trying to usurp the position of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's ironic. <laughs> and, yeah. I mean, I do quite understand some of the positions of of the earlier uh, people who might have been a bit, you know, scrutinizing some of the hadith and a bit, you know, wary of it. You know, ask mm -hmm. questions, you know, you get answers and whatnot. But yeah, I think this is, this, yeah, I'll just leave it there. I don't want to keep waffling. But, yeah, no, 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 that's that's fine. Yeah, I mean, see, I'm not asking for the Quran to see or anybody to just blindly accept every hadith. I mean... You know, of, call, of course, the, uh, our scholars have scrutinized them. And I'm not saying that, you know, hadith can, are, are without criticism. No, by, by no means am I saying that. But what I'm saying is when you take the position of literally just following this book alone, yeah. the Quran alone, and just throwing everything else, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, well, then you're going to have some problems. Like when I was asking, I don't know if you were listening to the previous guy, when I'm asking about what the months for Hajj are. Mm. And he comes down to saying, well, there's four months. And I'm asking, OK, what are those four months? He doesn't know. And then he finally gives me an answer after he probably Googled it and says, oh, well, it, the first month of Hajj starts with Ramadan. Well, where are you getting that in the Quran? Where's a verse that says Hajj starts with Ramadan? Right. It's not it's the there. Same. It's so, the same. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, the problem with the Christian as well is that some, some academics even have discussions. Did, did this figure Jesus even exist? Because they have no isnad, they have none of that which we have. And it's almost as though the Quranist wants us to get rid of that. But say we were to have done that, of course it's not. But say this were to happen 300 years ago, or sorry, 1300 years ago. You know, in, in the masjids today, they'd be, you know, pulling microphones out, rapping the adhan, the call to prayer. Like the Christian yeah. does, you know, they, it's like they don't, <laughs> it's just silliness, it's silliness. Yeah, yeah, silliness. it's like modern day Protestant Christians where they're just like, oh, well, I've got my Bible and that's all I need, you know, this is my Bible. Yeah. They don't care about the history of how they got the Bible and who wrote it and who preserved it and they don't yeah. care about any of that stuff. I mean, they, they you don't, don't even know. know Mark, Luke, John is. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. Anything. And these people don't know anything about the prophet, alayhi salam. Because although right. 
the Quran addresses him, and there are some things that we can glean from the Quran, the, the biography or who the prophet was and what he did, many, many of that is not in the Quran. You know, right. we know that from the Sunnah. So, I mean, you're claiming to follow a, a book that was brought by a man, the prophet, alayhi salam, and you don't know anything about him. I right. mean, and this is just... Yeah, a, good a good argument would be, would be the punishment of a fifth a cut mm. in the hand off. Yeah. So, to presume this were a child, are we to just cut his hand off? Yeah, yeah. so I, I brought that up. Uh, I don't know if um, you saw our episode that we did. Uh, I think it was on TAP, Thought Adventure Podcast. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. Um, I brought this up, and the one guy was like, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm an old school Muslim, fam. He's like, yeah, just chop. I was like, just chop the little kid's hand off for stealing an apple. I'm like, are you serious, bro? This is like this is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So it and and that was my point that I mentioned to Farid is that a lot of people see they have a problem with certain hadith and it's like, oh, you know, there's certain issues with the hadith and maybe there's certain punishments or things mentioned in the hadith that are harsh. But mm -hmm. I was bringing up that an example with the Quran that without the hadith or the sunnah to actually clarify it and say, oh, here's a situation where the punishment is carried out. Here's when it isn't. Here are the, um, you know, sort of the things that are necessary in order to establish a ruling. None of that is in the Quran. You just have, oh, he's a thief. Cut the hand off. That's it. Khalas, right. it's done. And, and, yeah. and obviously that would be unjust. But that guy yeah. had to take that position and admit it. So, but yeah, bro, I, I appreciate you uh, giving your uh, two cents. And um, I'm going to have to move on to the next person. But uh, nope. may Allah bless you. May, may Allah bless you too. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. All right. So, Mr. Eating, I'm, I'm going to try to go back to you. Um, let's see if your connection's any better. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Are you there, Mr. Eating? I'm not sure if you're talking, but if you're talking, I can't hear you unless your connection is still not there. Eating, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove you because I can't hear anything you're saying. So um, try to get that figured out. Try to get that worked out. I'm gonna go to the next person, which is um, Yosef H. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm not sure what happened with the other guy, but how are you doing? I'm doing very well, alhamdulillah. Um, first, I'd like to say I respect what you do on these streams and on top. I am an avid follower of what you guys do uh, there. Um, should I just state my position? Yeah, sure. All right. So first of all, I would like to say that I don't exactly reject all hadith on... Um, what their contents are. I think they provide very good historical insight onto what the life of the Prophet Muhammad was like and uh, what the context of the Quran might have been addressing. However, I do uh, heavily doubt the prescriptive uh, authority that a lot of people attribute to it. Okay, and so the, the stream... Is Seems like you got some background noise there, brother. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Is 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 uh our that's probably my laptop. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's kind of noisy, but um, yeah, this the stream is can we practice Islam without the Sunnah? So would All you right. say yes or would you say no to that? Um, I'd say if you are excluding uh, historical context to explaining what the Quran is trying to uh, prescribe then uh, I would say you can, but it would be like um, walking on a very thin thread. Yeah, I mean, like the gentleman before about the, the supposed months of Hajj, uh, it doesn't seem to me that you would be able to identify them from the Quran alone. Would you accept that? Right. I would say you wouldn't be able to identify them without the uh, without uh, Hadith context or other sources. However, like I would say that it uh, it's not very important on what the months were, but rather that we all practice them at the same time. Yeah, but the only reason we practice them now at the same time is because uh, the, the government where Hajj is has a certain time that it established them. 
but for all we know, they could be doing it at the wrong time. So uh, the reason we know is is through the tra tradition, either through um, specific hadith or from the practices of the people. Now, if you accept that, um, that's fine. I think we're on the same page. And then you just might have an issue with a uh, particular hadith or accepting all of hadith wholesale. And uh, that's fine, but that, that's just kind of another issue. Uh huh. Um, I would, but like, all right, so like, there's this thing where, um, so the sacred months, have you heard of like this theory of the, uh, that there might have been leap months uh, in the past? Like, so that, that thing about like, okay, a month, this, this month is certainly Ramadan, or that like some Ramadan should have been in every summer. Uh, I'm I'm not sure I'm understanding you. Can you can you so say like, it again? Yes, there is a theory that uh that Ramadan should yeah. have, should be to land in the summer every year, and that there should be leap months every what? How many years? I don't know. Oh, you mean it's, it's static, more static. Yeah. Um, okay. and that we might we might be we might be uh fasting on the wrong month, like in uh relation to what they might have practiced back then. And what is that going to be based on? I'm I'm, say, I'm saying like so the 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 exact dates of what the sacred months were might not be very relevant. Uh, but why wouldn't they be relevant if if a law tells you to practice them during that time? Um, I think they would be relevant because everybody at the time was using the same kind of calendar date system back then and that they would be fasting on the same days rather than one person fasting on one day one person performing hajj in another month you know yeah okay so i mean let, let's move to another issue which is i kind of uh, actually the other brother brought it up and then um i commented on it what about the punishment for the thief and the put on what do you think about that all right so um that that one that point is a very interesting point because I I think I do believe that most Quranists uh, believe that you should that it has to be more than a certain amount right but that's not stated anywhere in the Quran. Um, so I, I do believe that there has to be more than a certain amount, but that's only because I, I don't know. I think the Hadith has uh, provides some good insight on that. Yeah, so in chapter 5, verse 38, it is, As for the thief, the male and the female amputate their hands in recompense for what they earned as a deterrent from a law or punishment from a law, and a law is exalted in might and wise. So it says the, the thief, the male or the female, it says amputate their hands, and it's actually both hands mentioned. So what does that mean? If somebody steals something that we would just... And they get caught, we, we would cut off both of their hands? Or how do you understand that? How I understand that is it has to be of a certain value. Um, I think uh, as a, from a or honest perspective, you would have to argue you're not a thief unless you steal something of a certain value. Right, but how would you argue that based on the text? And, and what would the value be? Um, the exact value, yeah, there's no basis on the exact value in the Quran. Uh, we'll have to concede to that. Um, so don't. So then, because what you said before, specific, and the reason I brought up this point because I wanted to move on from the Hajj thing, and, and you had mentioned legislation earlier. Wouldn't this then um, be an element in which we we do have reason to accept uh, legislative authority outside of the Quran, at least to contextualize this verse itself? I think. Um, not necessarily, but uh, definitely conveniently so. Conveniently, you can take from the hadith, and that would that would be able to easily explain why what uh, the the uh, magnitude of what the crime should be. Um, but uh, from a, like a, a necessary perspective, I think more importantly, the what the the culture uh, designates as like significant enough should probably be enough. Um, brother, I, I do apologize because a lot of people are, are complaining about the, the noise. I think when you uh, yeah, I think when you listen back to this, you're gonna hear how noisy it is. I, I, I am gonna have to let you go. I wish I could have spoken to you longer, but it's just it's just too bad. It's it's really 
It's really loud, brother. I'm, I, no I'm, worries. Jazakallah khair. I appreciate it. I will try to rejoin on my phone if that's possible. All right. Well, yeah, come. Take care. Um, yeah, it was just, it was too, it was too noisy. Um, I'm, I'm sorry about that. It was, it was just too much. But we've got two more people. Let's go to uh, Ganguteli. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that pr correctly, but welcome. Yeah, hi. Uh, can you hear me, Jake? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah, I was just uh, wondering, like, you said you cannot follow Quran only, no? Um, well, the, the title of the stream is Can We Practice Islam uh, Without the Sunnah? So I, I'm saying no. That's my okay. answer. How, how would you answer that? And uh, what's your position, I guess? Uh, I don't like uh, reject all the ideas, but I think I think Quran Quran can be enough sometimes, no? Quran can be what? I'm sorry. In, enough, like for someone to follow sometimes. Uh, on certain things, it certainly is. Like what's? Can you give me one example, like? Well, I mean, I was. Just, I don't know if you were listening or if you were able to hear, because that the the guy before you had a lot of background noise. I don't know <laughs> what yeah, was going yeah. on. Uh, people thought he was being uh, abducted by aliens or something. But um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, I was asking specifically, like, when it comes to law with the Quran in uh, chapter five, verse thirty-eight, when it mentions, uh, you know, cutting off the hands of the thief. Um, you know, from from the Sunnah, we have examples and further details and explanation of when the punishment is to be carried out, what the uh, requirements for it are, and all of those different things. But we don't have that in the Quran. So on a straightforward basis, it would seem that if somebody steals something, the thief, and he gets caught, uh, both of his hands are to be cut off. So uh, I know that you said that you're not a full-blown Quranist, but I'm wondering if you understand that point and how do you think a Quranist would respond about that? Uh, I would say, I would say, do you know the surah about uh, about the people who uh, spread corruption? Have you heard about the surah about the people who spread corruption? Uh, well, I mean, that's mentioned in several surahs, so I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, but go ahead. The, uh, their hands are cut, their hands are cut because they fight against Allah. I think they only, I think that cutting the hands was to, to, uh, make people afraid or to deter people from doing uh, crimes and stuff. But I don't think, I don't <laughs> think you need to cut hands today. You can just put them in prison or something. Okay, but I mean the the text says that. So how how would you go about changing that? Uh, but the text was like to scare people from doing crimes. During the time of the prophet, there was no prisons. There were nothing. There were wars. They lived in a war, constant war. Mm -hmm. So that was the only reason to make people like because when they went for the to war, when the man left to go to war, then every mm -hmm. Everything was in the open. If you stole something, you would harm the the entire community. It was a small community, so mm -hmm. this was to this was to deter people. And today we can deter people by putting them in prison and stuff like this. I don't think this is a, this applies today. You can just change it with time. Uh, you um, can use a method. You can use a method to to have an effect on thieves. Uh, yeah. So. I mean, where does where do you draw the line? How do you decide what the punishment is going to be and for how long and how does same, that work? The same way we, we put pe people in prison, we decide. Okay, we, so, it's in our so, hand. It's in our hand to you to to decide the laws. What kind of like okay. if you you know what I mean? Like today, you can use the modern laws, like human laws. This applies to to those laws. This uh, surah. Yeah, but does that apply for all of the judgments in the Quran, or just this one? It, de it depends. Like, like I said, there is a surah where you cut the hands, 
because people spread corruption. They fight against the Allah and the, the Prophet, which means it's a full blown war. Yeah, but so, this, but the, the thief is not a is not uh, necessarily no, the, the, a war. The, no, the thief is you can you can uh, you can apply the laws of modern laws of human laws like we can we can use prisons like for example we don't have to cut the, the thieves yeah no but, you, but i'm saying but what's your basis for that though because what if a Qurana says no this is what the text says this is what we should do how would you refute him like how would you how show that he's how would you show that he's wrong if he thinks that hey i'm a quranist this is what my quran tells me to do how would you show okay, him one that of he's the wrong? One of the one of the ways you can show him he's wrong is because the uh, Quran says that, like you ask him, what's the age then? What kind do you? Does this mean that you can cut the the hand of a, a one year old child? No, because Quran says that Quran says look after the orphans until they until they reach the age of maturity. So you have to, and then you can you can give the you can give the wealth back to them. So he's giving you he's giving you some sort of uh, guidance. Yeah, who you gonna so who you can punish? And then you have the verses where you have the surah where people spread corruption, which means full-blown war against the Muslims. And okay. so there are there are uh, there are some conditions. So you have to choose. You have to go in between them. You know what I mean? You have to go. Yeah, in but between I, I, I'm I'm saying to you, brother, though, is that if he says to you, "Well, this is what the Quran says," okay, let's wait until they reach puberty. So once we say, let's say they're 13 years old. Let's just make an example. Or fifth, yeah. we can even say fifteen years old. Okay, a fifteen-year-old. If he goes out and he steals an apple off a uh, fruit cart, cut his hands yeah. off. What if he wants to say that? He's not fighting against the law, and so yeah. But this verse doesn't say thieves. he's fighting against the law. It just says that he's a thief. It says cut yeah, the hand the off. Thing the is, thief. Yeah, but the the thing is like uh, it's that's to 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 make people scared. Yeah, but the, it doesn't say that it's merely to make them scared. It's a command. It says this is what should be done. It should be yeah, but that's to everything was done to to make. What do you think? Like the the Quran. Quran is a message to bring people closer to Allah. Yeah, everything has a reason. It's not uh... to kill people. Every single because you have to give people a chance to repent. Well, it was only it actually, to scare. People. Actually, it actually mentions afterwards. It says, "But whoever repents after after exactly. his wrong, hold on a second, after his wrongdoing yeah. and reforms, indeed a law will turn to him in forgiveness. Indeed, is a law is forgiven and merciful. But it doesn't say anything about not doing the punishment." Wait, wait. So wait. So you. So let me explain this. So you kill you. You cut the hand of someone. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, he repents. <laughs> it makes no sense. Why? It makes no why, sense. Does it, why doesn't it? Why doesn't it make sense? Because the hand is gone. You paid for that. You have to repent for something else now. You have to repent for your your spirit. The hand is gone. The, the, the no. you repent before you, the sin. You, you paid the price. You paid the price. Yeah. What price did Adam pay? Who? Adam. Adam. He sinned. Yeah. What price did he pay? He repent. Allah forgave him. You cannot yeah, just cut the hands. Why not? That's what the verse says. No, it it mentions the repension. This is how Allah speaks. Repension is always the first thing to 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 come into consideration. Adam sinned. He he should what pay what price did he pay? He paid no price. Yeah, he repented. Exactly, and Allah forgave yeah, so him. I'm, yeah, but I'm saying this verse says if a thief commits thievery, the male and the female, you're to cut off his hands for what he did. And then he repents after you cut the hands. Makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Why not? The hand is gone. The hand is gone. So what? what's the point of? He repented for the crime he did. He didn't repent for anything else. This is only yeah, for the that, crime. That's what he's supposed to do. He's the, it, the, ver, the verse actually says that it's a recompense, a payment for what he earned. Kesaba. It's what he earned. Yes. So he doesn't need to repent. Because he did the punishment, yes. like no, it, no, it no, says no, no. he does. It says he does, but it makes no sense, uh, Jake. Why? It makes no sense. Let's let's because let's say you did something wrong, and then Allah puts you in in, in hell for let's say for you to purify your soul for the crime <laughs> you did. 
you don't need to repent after that. The, the, the punishment is the repentance. If you, no. if you, no, you still yes, need to it repent. Is. And you still need to repent, brother. It's like this: if you have a child, right, and you say, "Listen, yeah. I told I told you not to do that. Now you're going to go in time out because you did something wrong." Now, when you put him in time out, just because he stays in time out for 30 minutes doesn't mean that he repented. He can yes. stay in time out for 30 minutes. And then when he's done, you go to him and say, OK, now you, you sat down here like a nice boy for 30 minutes. Now I'm going to take you out of time out. You're not going to do it again. Right. And he's going to say yes. Now, maybe he's going to go and he's going to do it again. The point is. Just because you punish somebody doesn't mean that they can't repent and say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it again. But if you cut the hands of the child, you don't say to him, look, go <clears throat> look at your hand. You say, your hand is like a reminder all the time. You are, you're taking something from him physical. It's, yeah. it's, it's a different story. It's a complete different story. He doesn't have to need to repent. He paid the price. He did the crime. He paid the price with his hand. That's the, his repentance. So, so you're saying he can simply uh, commit th uh, theft and then he doesn't have to get his hands chopped off. All he has to do is say, I'm sorry, and the whole thing is done. No. Yeah, Adam did the same. He said, I'm sorry, as long as it's a small crime. So, so let me get this straight. Gangutelli. Let, let me get this straight. As I said, there is a yeah. story with... Yeah, yeah but Gangutelli, let, let me... Corruption. You're breaking up, brother. Let me let me get this straight. Are you saying to me, if I come into your house and I steal all your money, steal all your belongings, and then you find out it was me, and I say, you know what, Gangutelli, I'm just I'm really sorry it was me. What are you going to do about it? Well, he left the stream. I guess he's going to leave. <laughs> he's gone. See you later. Um, Mr. Eats Eating. This is the third time. I'm going to give you another chance, buddy. I I'm not sure what's going on with you, but I'm going to try to put you on here one last time. And if you're not here, then that's it, bro. This is your last chance. So Eats Eating, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> I'm very sorry. If, if it happens again, um, just leave, leave it for tonight. We'll, get, we'll do three another, another day. Anyway, th okay. thank you for having me on. As, as I said before, I admire your show and, and what you do. Um, the, the issue I have with um, um, the label of Hadith Denier mm -hmm. yeah. is, that, is that whenever uh, I or other Muslims come across a Hadith which that seems odd to us and we want to question it and it, we might know some things about the rules of accepting hadith but we're not experts of course we say that that seems odd and um, i can't accept that um we're accused of being hadith deniers and uh that's um you know uh, we're painted with that brush is that how you see it as well if if there are a few hadiths that we don't um subscribe to does that mean we are hadith denies? Not necessarily. But, yeah, because that, that's how it uh, often comes across to uh, when, whenever we say, well, that is odd. We can't accept that. Um, no, I, I, well, I'm, I'm certainly not advocating on this stream or anywhere else that it's all or nothing, that you either have to accept no hadith or all hadith. I think that they're the hadith need to be scrutinized and looked at in terms of their chains, in terms of their content and all those yeah, of type of things. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. But of when somebody's course. trying to throw out the entire tradition and, and yeah. part of the tradition has been used to preserve the Quran, uh, that, that's when I think there's a problem. Of course, I understand what you mean. Um, I think you understand what I mean as well. However, um, for example, if there's something in um, Sahih Bukhari, for example, there's a hadith, if someone from Ikrima, uh, if um, someone leaves their, <clears throat> their deen, kill them. If, if that's to us because uh, Imam Malik, you might know, considered, considered Ikrima to be a liar, and so do some other, some other um, 
Mujtahid uh, scholars. Um, however, it is in Bukhari, and um, B- Bukhari is, everyone says every hadith in Bukhari is sahih. So just by denying one hadith in Bukhari or being suspect, uh, you're, uh, you, you, you become a hadith denier because you can't. Um, you can't um, deny any sahih. Also, many of the, uh, as you also, you said you're on Mal- Maliki, uh, you know that uh, Imam Malik uh, did not like single chain narrations, uh, call them ahad. So um, many of the, for example, the age of Aisha, you know, if she was nine, um, she was nine. Um, and th- th- there's no problem with that. In, th- in those days, um, the young marriages were, were common, acceptable, universal. However, the, the fact that all, if not most, of those narrations come from Basra, that, a- according to the methodology of Imam Malik, that could also be considered Ahad, because if, if this was a well-known fact, her age of marriage, it would have been narrated by people from other areas and it would have been uh, um, multiply, multiply attested. So th- that, that to some of us seems a bit odd. That is just from one area. Uh, of course, th- these, are, these narrations are also in, in Bukhari. So um, when we... I think, well, I, I'll t- have to talk about myself. When I question these uh, hadiths, um, I'm accused of being a hadith denier. So th- this, is, this is the uh, issue I have. Um, putting a, across a, uh, for example, w- w- you were just talking about something in the Quran, chopping off the hands. I can, once, I was like you once as well. I was a Quranist, but then I realized that we have to put all these verses into context. So th- there's many hadiths that uh, give nuance to the um, issue of cutting off the hands. And so I do not, I, um, I came to realize that we can't do without the hadith traditions. However, based on the, uh, the stringent um, categorizations and um, that the scholars had actually placed on hadith, some of them seems, seem odd to me, yet that there is a climate in which uh, questioning any, any of these hadiths, especially those in, in Bukhari, uh, you just become labelled as a, um, a, Quran di- uh, a hadith denier. Perhaps I'm not uh, um, what um, you, a guess, the type of guest you wanted to come on, but I just wanted to um, put that across to you as well. Some of us who are struggling with um, which hadiths we can accept, this hadith or that hadith seems a bit odd, yet to, uh, to bring it up, to question it, yeah, you're labelled as a hadith denier. Um, some people have actually, um, s- some prominent people, I don't want to say their names, that they have also pointed these things out, but uh, they have also been accused of being uh, uh, revisionists or modernists or, um, and, you know, even when they call for honest debate, you know, to to actually clear these issues, um, they're considered innovators and no one will, no one will actually debate them. Uh, They don't, uh, the ones I'm thinking about, I'm not thinking about like Edith Buxel, who completely, completely um, erases all the hadiths. But um, I, I don't want to say I don't want to say the, the people's names. But there are those who say that we have to be more stringent. We have to go back to the methodology of uh, the school of uh, uh, Malik, um, his actual methodology, and and to really, really scrutinise. Uh, hadith in um, Bukhari and the way they were co- they were collected and passed it and passed down to us. Um, 
that's really all I have to say. I mean, uh, if you want to comment on that, um, we can say good night. I, I don't really think I'm the, I'm the kind of guest that you wanted to um, come on and pick your brains on these, or you pick my brains. But uh, I just I, I just thought um, I should also point that out. So some of us who are called hadith and eyes have got this issue. Yeah, that's fine. I, I think it, that, that's sort of a separate issue on specific uh, hadith and whether or not they are um, authentic in terms of their chain or authentic in terms of the content. Uh, I, I mean, those need to be looked at on an individual basis. So I'm not going to be able to do that here. I'm no... Mm -hmm. Uh, hadith scholar. I don't claim to be. Um, yeah. I'm only. I'm only mainly concerned with the people who are rejecting it as a uh, an entire concept in general. Now, yeah. that's not to say that I don't think that you may run into certain issues um, as well, depending on what the issue is. But um, you know that would <laughs> that would require us to to, to go into specific hadith and yeah. talk about them. And, and you mentioned ikrama and and those things, but I'm I'm certainly no scholar of hadith, so I can't really comment on mm. specific narrators here and there. But I do I do want to just correct on one thing: is that although Imam Malik uh, believed in the uh, amal of uh, Ahl al Medina, the people of Medina, and uh, mutawat al hadith, he also did accept uh, ahad narrations. I mean, uh, one specific example that I can think of off the top of my head, and it's it, it's not like a big deal or anything, but he mentions in his text that it's considered uh, mandub uh, to actually donate the value in gold uh, of the hair that's cut off from a new newborn baby uh, from the aqiqa. Uh, and he explicitly states that this is not from the amal and it's not uh, a mutawata hadith. So he does accept ahad narrations. Now, whether or not he accepts uh, specific ones that you're referring to that you may have a problem with, that's an entirely different story. But Imam Malik definitely does not completely disregard all ahad narrations. So I did want to just uh, mm. clear that issue up. But um, no, I wouldn't say that you're a hadith denier in totality, meaning that if you deny specific hadith that you may or may not have an issue with, but, um, yeah, unless you have any last thoughts, um, I think I'm going to move to the next person, but I yeah. appreciate you, uh, you coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. I just wish that people who – scholars who do actually bring these things up are not, are not just dismissed as innovators and no one wants to discuss, discuss issues. Because, as you said, we're, we're not scholars on Hadith especially, so we can't really comment any further. But I do wish that scholars who do want to debate the issue aren't just dismissed as innovators. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, uh, and uh, all the best. May Allah guide you and uh, keep you strong in in your in your path. I mean, and you as well. All right, salam alaikum. Thank you, all right, so we've got a cup. Uh, we've got two couple people waiting here. I'm going to go to. Uh, and then this is probably going to be the last couple guests here. Uh, salam. Hello. Salam. Alaikum salam. Jay. Oh, okay. How you doing, Jay? How are Kif? Hey, how are Kif? How are you doing, brother? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Barakallah fiqum. Quick question, my brother. Um, the brother brought up that you're a Maliki and Fiqh. Uh, just, yeah. just now. So, uh, brother, do you do you uh, have you studied any Maliki tests, or do you go, just go into the do you go into the Muatta to take to take uh, rulings? How how did you learn? Uh, let's say you know the, your furu of salah and stuff like that. How did you what did you do yourself for, like to learn the Sunnah? Uh, no, I have, the I, I have thick texts. They're they're back there. If you want me to get some of them, yeah, yeah, please, yeah, please. Yeah, I'd like to see that. <laughs> Hello? He's, he's, oh, he's going to get his books.
Okay. Can everybody hear me? Hey, Farid, can you, oh, Farid response. Salam alaikum. I'm a fan, bro. I watch a lot of your videos, brother. I see you in the chat there. Okay. For, you know, Farid response from me. All right. So I'm back. So I got a couple books here. Uh, I'm not okay. sure what exactly you want to know, but I've got, uh, I do have the Muatta. Uh, okay. I've got a text here, which is in English, Maliki Thiq by uh, my so teacher, called? Dr. Shadi al Masri. Oh, he's all that. He's great. He's awesome. He's so you learn, you learn. So you took from that book, from that book, that's where you learn some of the, some of your fiqh, like the, the uh, like the furu. This is Al Murshid Al Mu'in. Uh, who's this, Jake? Who's the writer of this? Because I can't really see it too well. Yeah, I've been not sure. What's that, sorry? I've been not sure. sure. I've been yeah. not sure. Okay. So, um, so you, you, yeah, but, you this, but, but my my direct teacher is is Dr. Shadi Al Masri. But anyway, so 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 you okay? So you take obviously uh, you don't go into the books. I did say, uh, say say let's say Sayyid Al Bukhari for uh, like a ruling. You're not going to go in and look for hadith because you don't speak Arabic. You, you don't understand Arabic. You know you know what I mean. You're not going to go there and, and to say, oh, I'm going to apply this to my life. But you will ask Dr. Shadi about the topic before you do anything. Is that is that it? Is that is that what you do in your in, in like in like how can I say in in your life? Uh, yeah. Well, he's my direct teacher. If I have a question, I'll ask him. But I've I've studied uh, several classes specifically with him in person. So okay. yeah, I, I mean the the local masjid that uh, I attend is uh, the one that he is the residing scholar at. So okay. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I follow. I, I, I think that if you, you know, if uh, if you're not a mujtahid, like you know, an expert in Arabic, been classically trained, and have, uh, oh, someone call it direct chain to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have no opinion. You have to, you have to go to the ulama. Those people have been trained. I think a lot of people have opinions they, when, which they shouldn't. As, no, you know, I'm, not, uh, I'm not. I'm <laughs> not. I'm definitely not an expert in hadith or fiqh or anything like that. I just. Well, that, I, that's uh, what I'm saying. If you're not, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say to the people in the audience. I'm not saying to you, yeah. brother Jake. I'm just saying to the people around you, you should go to your ulama, to the, to the ulama who trained, who studied. You know what I mean? Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm totally against this. Sorry to cut you off. I'm totally against this DI, uh, DIY approach. Do it yourself. I'm totally against this. Because if you know what, if you want to get your, you know, if you want to get your appendix out, you're not going to buy a medical journal and read the medical journal and say, oh, baby, I'm going to cut my, my appendix out. No, you're going to go to the, you're going to go to an expert. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I don't do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't just. I mean, I read the the Mata, but if I if I have a question, uh, I don't just extract rulings from it. Or I mean, I have the entire collection of Bukhari and Muslim over there. I don't just pick them up and read them and and start extracting my my own rulings out of that. That's no, just, you know, just because like brother, because like the last guy that came on, he's saying, "Oh, I'm uncomfortable with this." No, but who are you? To be uncomfortable. So what? I don't care if you're uncomfortable. Who cares? You know I mean, you're oh, nobody. Yeah, the previous yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, like, like I said to him, I mean, he, he doesn't completely reject the sunnah, but at the same time, like I said, if, if, you, if you've if you got an issue with something, um, you can speak to somebody about it. I'm not the type of person that I'm going to be able to tell you, oh, about this person in the chain, whether or not he's problematic and, and tell you yeah. about the hadith. That's, that's way above my pay grade. That's not, uh, you know, I'm not in any business to be doing that, especially not here live on a, live on a stream. But I, I did correct him on the one point that uh, uh, Imam Malik certainly accepted I had. Uh, oh, narr uh, narration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He narrates them. He yeah. transmits them. He transmits them in the muatta. Yeah, so, exa yeah, exactly. So I don't. I'm not sure where he got that from, but uh, yeah. I did. I did correct him on that point. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, if he he's got issues, he he should speak to uh, scholars of hadith or fiqh if he has yeah. specific questions. And and that's. Can I, ask you another, can I ask you another question, bro? Is it okay? Do we have time for one more? I don't know. One more yeah. Time. Yeah, one. Just a yeah. quick one. Yeah, I'll try to answer if I can, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, so no, so um, in Akida, in Akida, I know you. I see you. I listen to your your cat, your podcast, or your uh, your live streams. 
I see you debating with the Christians and stuff like that. You get heavy into their in their books. What books of creed Islamic? Sorry, sorry about that, brother Jake. Sorry. What books of Islamic creed have you studied? I just want to know what you've read. You know, if, you know what I mean? If you have any books, what books do you recommend? Islamic creed. What, what books do I recommend? Yeah. No, Obviously I'm the not. Book of Allah. Book of Allah. Yeah. The Aqidah Tahawiya text. Have you studied that text? Uh, I haven't studied that text. No, I know what it is, but I haven't studied it. I studied uh, Aqidah with Dr. Shadi. Um, I've also studied. I've got some Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, text back there as well um and i mean i've got all the different schools really <laughs> so, but so, I mean, who, do you, who, do you, who do you prefer or do you don't want to say uh what do you mean who do i prefer are you like, like, are you like the ashari the asharis the maturidis i thought you no, were in I, yeah i don't i don't prescribe to a particular school so i've i've got a whole stream on that on my channel about that but yeah, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't prescribe to. I'm not, I don't call myself Ashari or Maturidi or any of that. All right, okay. Yeah. All right, brother. It was nice talking to you. Uh, thank you for having me on your. On the, uh, thank you for the chat and all the all best. Right. We talk to you soon, inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. All right, so um, I'm gonna kick out the other people that were already on. Because I've been going for two hours, guys, and I don't, I'm, I'm not going to go too much longer. So I'm going to have to kick, kick these guys out of here. I'm not going to be taking any more guests. This is going to be the last person, uh, and then I'm going to go. Well, I, I've got this one knucklehead here. I'm going to go to him last. But uh, Med Tem, you're up, and then I'm going to go to um, this other guy that's waiting. Uh, Med Tem, if you want to talk, you got to unmute your mic. All right, Med Tem, you're gone. Uh, eats eating. I I'm sorry, bro, but I, I already had you on and we, we kind of closed it out, dude. Uh, I'm not sure why you came back in the studio. But uh, I'm going to go to Mr. Alejandro Solomon. Welcome, my brother. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam, man. Uh, nice to be on your show for the first time. <laughs> yeah, long time no see. Yeah, now I just uh, took off work today, so that's why I'm able to do this. Be on your stream. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. But, uh, so you, you, did you take off just for me? Like, was I the big, big event? You're like, oh, Jake's doing a live stream on the <laughs> planet. I got I to gotta join, see what's going on. Nah, I mean, I don't know if you believe in <laughs> astrology. I mean, I don't think you do, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. Line that way or something like that. I don't know. Definitely <laughs> not. So, so, so people, so for people who don't know, and uh, actually, Farid, Farid was in the comments, so I don't know if he's still watching, but uh, this is this is one of my friends from high school, Alejandro. Call we call him Alibaba, but. Um, uh, he's one of the people, the, the first people actually that introduced me to Islam. And then, uh, we kind of been on a journey ever since, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm introducing Mr. Alejandro to my audience here. We've got some people watching. Um, why don't you, t why don't you tell people about, uh, a little bit about, you know, how we met and, uh, you know, how we first started talking about Islam and, and that kind of story. Yeah, so uh, it's a little wild story. Um, <laughs> we, we, we had a mutual friend, Dante, Dante Rancher. You, by the way, uh, him and Ricky have been trying to call you, reach you. Uh, that's what they've been telling me. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't get any call from Dante. Maybe, I think I did get a call from Ricky. But uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, he's in New York working with his mom recently, somewhere around here catering. Anyways, uh, we had a mutual named Dante. And... Uh, so uh, I met Jake my sophomore year of high school. I think that was his junior year. Uh, yeah. he's, he's a year older than me. Uh, and, you know, we would just chill, hang out, go to his house, play football, play video games, you know, just normal fun thing. And uh, one day it got to the discussion about, like, Bin Laden and Hitler and who, would, who we would rather see go to heaven or hell or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I said something. Do you remember what I said? I said something like, I think Bin Laden's going to heaven. Or, I don't know. I don't remember exactly. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, I can't I remember. So, um, anyways, uh, that's basically what started 
the whole, uh, you know, the cogs turning, I guess. The pen is, uh, yeah, it's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so from there, uh, me and Jake would constantly, like, you know, ask me questions. And I, his, I guess at, back then his main thing was to try and, like, disprove me or disprove uh, Islam. <clears throat> So I remember he started this uh, New Year's resolution, and uh, his resolution was to read the the, the Quran, the Bible, and the the Torah. And uh, he started with the Quran, and uh, I mean, from there he just didn't look back. Uh, he started asking me more questions from that point, where I would he would ask me questions, and I would tell him things that I remembered. I would mix up Quran and Hadith, and. Uh, I, I would get things wrong mixed up. I would mix them up and I'd be wrong at the same time with some things I said. So, uh, you know, Jake, you know, just did his due diligence and um, he he looked more into it. And um, he, at first he was, uh, he didn't know anything about Quran, I mean, uh, about uh, Hadith and Sun and all that. So uh, I was just trying to tell him like, yeah, you know, we follow Hadith and Sun and this is how we do some things and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he just didn't believe it at first. And uh, he actually ended up uh, going going closer to the Quran alone side at that point. And mm-hmm. he would uh, he would ask me questions and I'd be jammed because I didn't know enough. And um, I wasn't like as philosophically attuned to, to the world as you were, mm. as I am now. Um and so, you know, uh, from then on, we actually both became Quran alone. And uh, we both, uh, you know, we were in that for about seven, six, seven years, maybe, right? Yeah. And um, uh, after a while, um, we, we just figured that, like, you know, uh, the guy we were um, basically going to classes with, there's a group of us about a consistent, like, five six of us um we just realized that like you know there are some things that we have questions about and they really aren't being answered for example fasting i mean that was my first question i had that uh it was just dismissed um it's, I, I don't know if the people know uh and, and you know who are uh viewing right now but one of the things about um the whole uh Quran alone thing was that well at, at least uh the faction we were in was that uh there are some things that were in the Quran that were not prescribed for us meaning they're like for just specifically for that people at that time mm-hmm. and so that's what some things are just jotted down to as for example fasting well they knew what it was so they did it but we don't know what it is so we just leave it alone Mm. But my question against that <clears throat> was always, well, look, there seem to be things where it would apply to us today. Like, for example, accidentally killing somebody. You know, the, the alleviation of that sin is to fast for, I think it's 60 days or something mm. like that. Yeah. And so I felt like, yo, you know what? That, does, that seems like something that applies to us. Well, how does that not apply to us? <clears throat> and mm-hmm. so that sort of bothered me but um i just i just let it prod my soul for a little while and then uh one day uh jake came to me and he said yo look uh someone brought up to me the um the uh, the point of the qibla and mm. so he sat down with me and um explained to me you know 2143 and i saw the the whole like the whole point of it like i saw the problem of, in it and so for a while, we just, uh, I guess, I, me personally, after I was told that, I was looking into it. I couldn't find anything. So another day, Jake hits me up, and he's like, yo, uh, I think this whole Quran thing uh, is a problem. And I said, yeah, I don't think uh, I haven't seen an answer to, to why. First off, there is no command for to follow the first Qibla. And second, there's no mention of the first Qibla at all, you know? Uh, so where, where, if the followers were following the prophet, 
right? And they also followed the the the, the first qibla. Then whatever um whatever the messenger was following and the prophets were following had to have been revealed to them outside of the Quran for them to be following with the messenger as well. So that was one of the like mind opening points where I felt like, okay, well, you know what? I can't answer that question just from the Quran alone. And then there became other um, clarities uh, that were mentioned to me later on. And so I just felt like, wow, you know what? I got to come back to the Sunni Islam because, uh, you know, if we always had this one thing, if you got it, if you're wrong, the way to the only way to be right is to leave what's wrong and join what's right. So I had to leave what was wrong and, and join what is right. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> yeah, me and Jake, we've been friends for for since well, how long is it now? About half my life. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, uh, shoot, 16, so mm -hmm. about almost 15 years, 14, yeah. 14 years. Yeah, good chunk. Been a of long that. time, man. Been yeah. a long time, but we came full circle. I, when I met Alex, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a Muslim. Then I went to the Quran alone thing. He was a Sunni. I somehow convinced him to become a Quran alone. We were in that heavy for like six, seven, eight years. And then, um, you know, like over two years ago, uh, I became convinced that this is absolutely wrong and uh, went back to the uh, well, I never went back. I, <laughs> I went to it uh, to embracing the sunnah. And, uh, and then I convinced Alex and he came back to it as well. And that's it, folks. We're uh, we're full circle. We're back, Kobe and Shaq. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> East Eden was my alter ego, by the way. I don't know if people know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, but this guy's a wild cat. So if you see him doing anything online, yeah, right? I don't, I don't, I don't fully, <laughs> I don't fully endorse this guy. All right. I don't want people coming at me saying, "Oh, Jake's friend with this Alejandro." This is my guy, but um, yeah, he's he can he can do some crazy stuff sometimes. So, yeah, if but um, know, they could follow me on Twitter, <laughs> TikTok, all of that. Oh uh, yeah, people keep to trying to get me on TikTok, bro. <laughs> Should I get on TikTok or well, is it you crazy? You go viral quickly on TikTok. I say you do because it's something. It's a good platform to have. It's a good platform to have a platform. You know what I mean? Like your basically your page, your your videos are kind of forced onto people's feeds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since it's forced on people's feeds, it's easier for you to just be noticed rather than someone having to go see you, someone having to retweet you, like mm -hmm. one of your things. It's different. You're you're forced onto people's feeds um, on TikTok. And that's how more most people, I feel like, get famous or at least have some sort of platform. Uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would be definitely interested in what you have to say and things you had to say i think uh i mean <clears throat> obviously your content is much more like you know higher intellect stuff but you could answer simple questions about you know the dean and different things and you could answer some sort yeah of it's like but it's so the videos are short though right Isn't well it, uh... now, that, now they've made it so that you can make uh videos up to three minutes long so mm. um you know uh, up to three minutes, you're good. You could answer. So questions. I gotta hit him with the logical problem of the Trinity in three you minutes. Go, like, you bam, bam, go boom. Syllogism <laughs> to syllogism, to syllogism, quick. You know, like. Oh man, yeah. So and and you, another thing, to another thing. Alex used to know me when I and people know because I, I did a little rapping on here. Boy. When when I used to <laughs> rap back in the day, this guy used to come with me. Uh, we used to go to uh, we used to go to New York City. Back, this is this is back in the day, folks. Back in the back day. In the day. We used to go to New York City on the train together and with duffel bags full of CDs of my rap CDs. And uh used to go in the middle of Times Square, rapping for people in the middle of Times Square, passing out CDs, trying to get it, not even selling them, just giving them for free. Giving them out, just giving, just them, giving out. them out for free. Just 
for spitting the in the uh, spitting in Times Square for people. So uh, remember, remember that one time we went with uh, Will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. The detectives stopped us. Just put popped up their pocket like yo, FBI, <laughs> whatever they say, NYPD. That yeah, was that was crazy. Man. Yeah, that was that was funny, man. Yeah. So. But anyway, bro, I've been going on for for over two hours now, so I'm uh, I'm gonna end yeah. this stream out. But uh, appreciate you uh, for joining me. Somebody asked if they're older than me. Um, depends, no, bro. I, no, 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 one. not you, not you. Oh. Somebody was asking the chat. Uh, let me see if I could pull up the comment real quick. Uh, so someone asked if my beard is for sale. Uh, yeah, let me just uh, put it in the box. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, am I older than you? Uh, I don't know, bro, because I don't know how old you are. But I'll tell you my age. I'm, not, I mean, I'm not a female, but uh, you, no. I appreciate, I appreciate the the compliment, Alpha, the Alpha. Yeah, I'm uh I'm 30 years old, so I'm third. I turned 30 in January, so I don't know, Mr. Khan, if you're if you're. Uh, and he's one of my mods, so yeah. shout out to him. But um, yeah, I don't know if you're if you're over thirty, then yeah, you're older than me. If you're under thirty, then I got you. But um, but yeah, alhamdulillah. So uh, that's the story, folks. Appreciate everybody for watching. Appreciate my little uh, Quranist friends for joining. You know, uh, I wish we would have got some more people on, but uh, I, we got to go through a good few people. Um, do consider hitting that thumbs up button, guys, liking this. You know, we, we've had almost 200 people, I think, watching at one point. So I better have 200 thumbs up by the end of this. <laughs> and uh, leave those leave those comments on the live stream like you guys are doing. Uh, and then after the stream as well, as well, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, I mean, what are you doing, man? You you guys are watching me here, not subscribing. You got, one, brother. Yeah, you guys, you guys got to subscribe. But um, yeah, so the least you guys could do: subscribe, like, comment, and share that. Share that on your social media platforms, no matter how big or small. Uh, I do have a link going across the bottom of the screen. Consider becoming a patron, uh, either on Patreon or clicking that join button, which is also a pinned message in the comments. Um, to uh, support the work here. And if you do that as well, you'll get access to monthly members only live streams. But with that being said, guys, until next time, which I'm not sure when the next time is, uh, I'll let you guys know about that. And people know where to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. I've been on Clubhouse lately, bro. I don't know if you've been on Clubhouse, but I, I, I got it downloaded. Uh, yo, you got to download Clubhouse. I've been uh, I've been taking over. I've been taking over the CH over there. I've been taking yeah. over Clubhouse, and um, yeah, I've been opening up. Well, most of the time, I join other people's room, chilling with other people. Um, but uh, sometimes I open up my own room, talking to atheists, Christians, Hindus. Uh, ex-Muslims, Shia, whatever we everybody's there. Man, they got some some interesting people on uh, on Clubhouse. I'll tell you, out of this world, or like oh yeah, bro, like... some 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 <laughs> some, some crazy cats out on uh, out on um, what do you call it, Clubhouse? But yeah. uh, it's interesting. So I'm I'm enjoying the conversations there. Hello. But uh, yeah, so you guys, yeah, people can check me out on Clubhouse as well. Uh, I think it's at M Metaphysician, so uh, M for Muslim, and then Metaphysician, so people can check me out as there as well. Um, that's my same. I got the same tag on Twitter. But um, yeah, guys, until next time, inshallah. Guys, another day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.